Shoplifters usually think they won't get caught and often disregard the consequences. But what happens when shoplifters get caught by cops red-handed and have to face the punishment? Get up! Get up! Here are four of the craziest reactions of shoplifters getting caught, starting with by far the most controversial of the bunch. On September 25th, 2022, two men were seen purchasing a Halloween costume at Walmart. Seems harmless at first, until you realize they had two duffel bags filled with store merchandise that they didn't intend on paying for. Luckily, an employee noticed the two suspicious customers and called the police officer to stand outside the entrance, waiting to catch them. How's it going? We can go in here and talk. We're gonna walk in there. Stop. Do it. This is a risky takedown for the officer. It's a one-on-one -on -one fight and he's got no idea whether or not the man is armed. So he radios in a 1018, a code informing other cops that they need to get there urgently to back him up. But for now, he's still on his own and he has to make sure this guy doesn't get away. Stop <laughs> fighting. Unfortunately, the cop completely misses the taser, and the suspect is able to run away and escape through a back exit. But not before a backup unit arrives just in time to spot him sprinting away outside. This cop has a better time of taking down and restraining the suspect and manages to get him on the ground and in cuffs. But remember, this guy wasn't alone, and the cop's attention was now turned to finding the other man seen on the security footage. Conveniently though, they wouldn't have to look far. Man, you said you were walking your friends. Take off. I know, come on, my girlfriend's Take off. You've man. been following back and forth with this guy. Go. Boy, I know you're with him. Keys. Leave. Okay, I pay for my shit. I got money in my fucking pocket. Leave. All right. You can walk around and away. Touch, touch me too, bitch. Run the you. I'm calling my girlfriend to get his car keys. This, he was with him. Oh, his wife. I took that little thing and then he decided to take off with all his stuff. You need to walk away from me, man. I'm you need to go. I'm waiting for my girlfriend, man. You staying right with me everywhere I go. No, I'm going this way, motherfucker. Get my girlfriend for the car keys. What's wrong with you, man? You want him in the store? You want him in the store? No, it's trespassing. Just, just, just come outside. Stop, put your gun back. Why? Because we're done with you. Hey, look. Hey, look. Hey, look. I'll resist, man. Look. Go on the ground. Rosario, they got me right here in the front. They're handcuffing me too. I'm gonna grab his car, Tim. I'm rubbing your wife. Okay, we're going outside because they're handcuffing me. 
for no reason. You can pretty much guess what happens from here. They detain the man, tell his girlfriend what's happening, have a short argument with her, and then take the man back to a patrol vehicle. On a search of the man's pockets, a collection of pills and powders were found on him and confiscated. Both men were hit with a felony shoplifting charge, as well as a conspiracy to shoplift, while the other guy was also hit with another two drug trafficking charges. However, on the 21st of November of the same year, all charges were dropped against both suspects. A disappointing ending for sure, but this next shoplifting case has a much more satisfying conclusion, but not for the reason you may expect. Hi ma'am. Do you have stuff in your coat right now? Yeah. No. Okay. Employees said they saw you stuff stuff from your basket into your jacket. No, I just went and I just put all my stuff back because I was supposed to be my um, other half here and he never showed up. I just tried calling him actually. Okay, so if we search your jacket, we're not going to find any items? No. I'll give you an opportunity right now to take everything out. But it's going to be your one and only opportunity. If you take everything out right now, we won't even press charges, we'll just give you an option to I think that's a fair deal. Okay, fine. I have a hat and gloves. All right, there we go. It seems odd for someone to only want to shoplift a hat and gloves. It's a lot of risk for a very small reward. But as the cop learns more about the girl, it starts to make more sense. Do you have an address that you stay at? No. Are you working anywhere, Jamie? Yeah, it's just cold outside. I don't have any money. I just want a hat and gloves. It turns out this girl is homeless and has no money to buy anything to keep her warm for the coming winter. Unfortunately, this is a genuine problem that a massive amount of people face in countries all over the world, and a lot of people come to the conclusion that their only option is to steal what they need to survive. After all, if the consequence is a warm place to stay and a couple free meals, what's there to lose? Getting caught like this and being told they're not going to press charges is essentially the worst case scenario for her. Or that was until the officer decided to do this. You don't have hat or gloves? I'll buy these for her. Thank you, sir. Thank you. But don't, don't do this, okay? I know it's tough, but there's other ways call us for help all right but if you come back in here you're gonna get arrested again it's cold but 947 ain't worth you know especially like if you're out on bond and stuff Cold. I get it. I get it. But you know, call us for help. We have resources we can help you out with. You know, every contact with us doesn't have to be a bad thing. All right. Do you guys need anything else from us? No, thank you. Okay. Sounds good. No charges were pressed against the girl, and the police department applauded the officer for acting with true compassion. He dealt with this situation perfectly, something that can't be said of the officers in this next case. Get out of the car now! Get out of the car! In 2015, police pulled over a woman who was caught on CCTV shoplifting from a Walmart. But after a short talk with the cops, it's clear she had no intention of sticking around. After explaining what it is they're being charged with, the cops let one of the women back into her car to grab something. However, they seem to forget she still had her keys on her. This can only end one way. 
Somehow these cops allowed her to get into the driver's seat, put the keys into the ignition, and then simply drive away after ramming into one of their patrol vehicles. It's an impressive amount of negligence, but they can't stand around wondering how it all happened. They've got to give chase as soon as they possibly can. <laughs> At this point, the Jeep had gained some serious distance, but it seems as though the driver isn't the best getaway driver, and the cops managed to close the gap in less than a minute. The shoplifter speeds down the road, dodging traffic as she goes. The cops stay hot on her tail, but struggle to box her in or stop her at all, and she continues to wreak havoc. Along with the use of a spike strip from the cops, all of this reckless driving has taken a toll on her car. It's driving slanted, there's parts of it hanging off, and her tires are literally starting to fall apart. As the chase goes on, it starts to get slower and slower, until eventually, it stops completely. You have to wonder how anything that occurred in a Walmart warrants this level of escalation. Nevertheless, the shoplifter is finally removed from the vehicle and put in handcuffs, putting an end to her rather spontaneous reign of terror. It was later discovered that she'd shoplifted over $2,000 worth of goods, a felony, but definitely nothing worth the charges she was hit with after her escape. She was sentenced to criminal conspiracy, assaults and battery in the first degree, hit and run, and of course, shoplifting. She was sentenced to seven years in prison. For such a small crime, things got out of hand very quickly. But what happens when thieves start taking things to the next level? Well, that's what happened in this next case, when an employee started to steal huge amounts from her workplace. The business owner had been told during an audit that over $25,000 had gone missing and was unaccounted for. Around the same time, one of her employees had just purchased a new car and had frequently been coming into work with new designer bags and clothes. It didn't take a genius to figure out who the prime suspect was. I have to register tape too that she pulled it for the time stamp too. Okay, you got that on video? Or do you just the tape? I just have me on video, but not her on video doing it. But I have the time, but she went over time. Yeah, of course. What's your phone number? 
Excuse me, ma'am. Nine one seven. She's on the phone for customers. Hello. Hey, Hi. how are you doing? Good, how are you? Customer Police Department. Yeah. The reason why I'm here today is because we got a call in reference to something. I was wondering if we could talk to you for a second. Okay? Yeah, of course. Is there somewhere we can talk to her? A few months on private, you can just go on the back. <coughs> yeah, you can go okay. show us. So, the first question is, can you guess why we're here? Um, I was accused of stealing money at a party. That was it. Unfortunately, the cops aren't here about a small dispute at a party, but it does confirm to them that this is probably the person they're looking for. Oftentimes, if someone feels comfortable stealing in one situation, they're much more likely to be okay with doing it in a much more serious setting. This doesn't necessarily mean they're a kleptomaniac, as these people often steal for no other reason than to please their own desires, but regardless, the cops are fairly certain this is who they need to talk to. Tell us about I, all I was doing was trying to play a bond. I thought I started my period and I had moved this girl's bag. I only paid her back because I didn't want anything to happen. I didn't want it to be put on me because I'm not that kind of person. I'm sorry. We appreciate it, but mm -hmm. that's not necessarily why we're here today. We're here because you're being accused of theft. However, the theft is not in regards to that part. It's in regards to something that's happened here today. Okay. So... You have a manager um, who advised us that, well, not manager, you have one of your other co workers mm -hmm. who advised us that they left a certain amount of dollars, very identifying marks mm -hmm. on that. And you were the only person who was Okay. So. She also has the receipts of the opening of when the drawer was opened, what exact time. Okay. So, where we're at right now is uh, I can't I can't promise you anything, mm -hmm. but for me, and I'm sure Officer Ferrer same thing. Honesty is the best policy. Okay, so could you tell us anything about that? I did do it. Um, I'm having some issues with money right now. Okay. That ended up being a lot easier than the cops had expected. The managers had collected a substantial amount of evidence on her, including marking a number of bills in the cash register and later finding them in the girl's possession. The girl has obviously realized that she's been caught red-handed and figures there's no way out. However, now we get to watch her try and explain this all away. I just like bought off a new car, so it's, I haven't been working lately. Um, I will admit to that, so... Was it just today, or has it been in the past? It was today, and then I've done it in the past before, but never, like, large amounts. How much would you say? Probably, like... That's what we want to the back. 300, maybe, was the most beforehand. It's in my bag. Okay, can I go through that bag? Yes, sir. All right, do you mind, do you mind uh, coming over here for me? Just to identify. There's one J, there's my J. There's another J here, yeah, this is the only J, but I'll get you the serial number. That's a J. Yes, ma'am. The bills in her purse have both the same markings and serial numbers to those recorded by the manager. Can she have a seat for a minute? Of course. Can she have a seat? Okay. You want to press charges? Yes, I do. And because I added it up as thousand dollars that's been going on. You're breaking my freaking heart. I have the documentation in my car. I wasn't prepared to turn it over because I was trying to rule it out. But I'll show you what I was preparing for my insurance company. Okay, let's it's, see that. It's, it's well over what she has here. I was hoping she would show it all. What you took this morning and you didn't. So, no. Hey, I'm well, let's, let's, not make it, let's make it not contentious. Look at all of it. You can have it. Um, and that $22,000 doesn't calculate the 30, No, but I didn't know I actually okay. came in because I was planning on just interviewing her. Right. She was not originally who I thought it was going to be. I was very shocked. I, I got it down to just, I ruled out everybody but her and another girl. Yeah. And I actually just thought it was the other girl, to be honest. I'm not going to lie to you. But now looking at all this evidence and the time clocks when she was here, it all lines up. Yeah. Makes sense. Do you recollect any of those things? How much do you think you've taken over the years? It's just this year, by it's the way. It's just this year. It's just this year. How much do you... 
The evidence the manager had collected shows that over $22,000 had completely disappeared. And given the several extravagant purchases the girl had made that year, it's not hard to assume that the figure is fairly accurate. The police decide to put her in handcuffs and take her back to custody, where she was charged with theft, placed on a year of probation, and ordered to pay back a total sum of $20,000 to the company.